Hello everybody, a uh, very very good evening to one and all. I hope that everybody is doing absolutely great and today in this lecture we are going to cover the other parts of remaining temple architectural styles and the first part that we have already covered. In fact, we have covered so many things related to the temple architecture but today we are going to see the beginning of regional styles and the first part of that it will be the Vesar style of temple architecture. Okay everyone. So in the Vesar temple architecture, what are the features? What are the specialities? How do we distinguish between the Vesar temple and the Dravidian or the Nagar temples? What all things have been taken as common from the two predecessing styles? Or what are the new additions or new inclusions into this style of temple architecture? we will try to find out in this lecture. So make it sure that you share this class as soon as you join this session and uh, do not forget to hit that like button if you are satisfied with the content, satisfied with the lecture and if you think that it should be shared with other students as well, you can share it that. Okay. Now moving to the important part. In fact, before coming to the lecture, let me just tell you that today is the last date. In fact, Right, you might be aware that today is the 11th of September itself, right? So this batch is actually now, right, already started today. So make it sure that if you have not started your uh, admissions, in fact, not done your admissions even now, today is the last date to get enrolled in this batch. So I hope that you, most of you, those who are willing, they will not be delaying it further. Now, moving to the topic here. Vesar temple architecture. What is the meaning of the Vesar? So guys, basically this is the combination of Nagar as well as the Dravidian temple styles. Okay, Nagar and Dravidian temple style architecture. And here let me tell you that basically the Sanskrit term, right, the Sanskrit term called as Vishra, called as Vishra, which means an area to take a long walk. Okay, area to take a long walk basically why is this term used exactly to indicate or to denote the Vesar temple style? It is because the Vesar temple style, it involves, you know, it involves the long pedestrians, okay, long pedestrians. For example, suppose if you observe any temple which is constructed in the Vesar style, you will see that it will have a lot of zigzag type of a structure, okay lot of zigzag type of structure. It was believed in the initial days, it was believed that usually the Trikut style of temple construction should be followed for the Vesar style of architecture. What is the meaning of Trikut? Trikut, I think uh, some of you who might belong to the Uttar Pradesh or Bihar region, you might have heard that even in the Nagar temples, some of the temples have this Trikut style of setting of the temples where where the three distinct temples they are constructed at certain distance at certain distance so probably this temple style might have originated where the three distinct temples would have been constructed but later on when the royal dynasties started patronizing this particular design or this particular architecture they might have started constructing those three temples at one place or within one premise. This is how it got its name. You can just simply look and identify the typical feature of the shikharas or the tower or the spires of the temple. And I hope that every student who is watching this lecture, I think from today onwards, you will never be confused in identifying any temple, whether it is a Nagara temple or it is a Dravidian temple or it is a Vesar style temple. Just look at the spire of the temple and you will recognize, right? Look at the spire. There is the, right? There is the presence of, uh, no, this is spiral wheel. Then there is a vaulted roof, right? And then here you can see the presence of a domical like, a domical like finial. So when we talk about these specifications, about which, in fact, about two of them, about two of them we have already studied 
today we will be learning about the third one <coughs> now the question arises that which were the dynasties upsc can ask the question in the examination that which were the dynasties or following dynasties promoted the vesar style of temple architecture now you don't have an idea right for example the chalukyas are called as the pioneers of the temple architecture in vesar style but were the chalukyas only dynasty to promote it of course not then after chalukyas you will be watching that rashtrakutas even though rashtrakutas typically followed the dravidian architectural features however in certain group of temples they constructed they followed the vesar style okay apart from that chalukyas of kalyani absolutely they are also going to follow them then hoysalas of dwarsamudra and kakatiyas of warangal all these dynasties were the followers of the vesar temple architecture okay in fact you might have heard that news also then that uh, ramappa temple ramappa temple constructed by the kakatiya dynasty that was uh, included as 39th world heritage site by unesco in india okay 39th world heritage site categorized under the under the cultural heritage so you have to remember these features these uh, specialities or these things now talking about some unique features of the vesar style of temple architecture okay everyone and guys meanwhile those who are watching live if you have any queries or questions do not hesitate to ask that query that will be uh, answered to you you know write that completely completely and uh, without any hesitation you can simply ask that now moving further <coughs> let us understand the unique features of the vesar style of temple architecture the first and the foremost the first and the foremost feature that is the ornamentation ornamentation what is the meaning of ornamentation everybody ornamentation means the minute decorations the minute and intricate carvings that can be visible in the subsequent pages where i have added many pictures for you you will be able to see all those spe uh, specific features now moving next point what is that transformation of the dravidian features guys what does it mean even this dravidian tower dravidian tower just have a look on this particular temple tower you will understand this dravidian tower is actually having the rich intricate and pyramidical like structure right pyramidical shape structure whereas you can see this is also giving on the sideways also giving the looks like a pyramid but it is actually following the curvilinear design pattern curvilinear design pattern of the tower of nagar okay of the tower of nagar style so that means when we say that dravida tower is transformed so basically the height is uh, reduced in each and every step because dravidian towers are very very enormous you can understand by the example of brihadeshwar temple tanjavur and you will realize that at a time this used to be the highest building constructed in the southern part of india that was a tanjavur okay that was tanjavur temple for you so naturally the vesar style temples they don't have that much of height but of course they have the design similarities with the dravidian architecture however when we talk about the transformations of the nagar tower then i told you about the curvilinear pattern right about the curvilinear pattern what is the meaning of curvilinear pattern do you remember if you have not watched the previous lecture go and watch it you will learn there that the curvilinear design patterns they were called as rekha deul okay rekha deul in the kaling style in the kaling style and uh, generally generally they were called as generally they were called as uh, rekha prasad rekha prasad or latina okay latina 
वेर एज द स्ट्रेटिश द स्ट्रेटिश स्लो राइट स्ट्रेटिश स्लोप इज एक्चुअली कॉल्ड फमसाना कॉल्ड फमसाना दीज थिंग्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर बिकॉज वेन दीज टर्मिनोलॉजीज विल बी कमिंग इन द एग्जामिनेशन देन यू विल नो डेफिनेटली फील एंड यू विल रिग्रेट दैट पर हैप्स आई शुड हैव वॉस्ड आई शुड हैव लर्न आई शुड हैव स्टडीड दीज थिंग्स बट एनी वेज इवन टाइम इज नाउ यू कैन सिंपली वॉच एंड यू कैन सिंपली रिवाइज दीज थिंग्स ओके नाउ moving further and uh, when we talk about other features other special features of the vesar temple style then the mandap and the pillars mandap and the pillars these are the two outstanding features of the vesars let me tell you why because here there are two types of the roof domical ceilings first one and the second one that would be the that, that will be the square ceilings domical ceilings where usually four pillars are there and the ceilings are slightly you know looking like domes slightly hollow from inside and slightly bending upward something like that suppose these four pillars are there so it might be you know slightly slightly curved like that okay and what is the meaning of the square ceiling <coughs> square ceiling is simply simply the flat ceilings but they are specially vigorously designed right, right they are extremely well crafted ceilings and apart from the ceilings of the mandap guys i hope that everybody remembers the mandap right and if you don't remember the mandap remember that this is right a pillar and this is also a pillar and here are another group of pillars and if you just joined these pillars with the help of the with the help of the roof okay and on the right on the pillar only the roof cover is there side wise nothing is there then we will call it as a portico type of mandap or we will cover it from the side ways only the entrance will be left then we will simply call it as a mandap call it as a mandap okay so here the mandap ceilings are decorated very 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 vigorously and the next important feature that is the pillars guys you will watch these pillars and you will be amazed to see those pillars in fact the pillars of the chalukyas hoysalas kakatiyas they are so intricately carved have a look on these temple structures guys i hope that it is visible to everybody it is visible to everybody this is a kashi vishveshwar temple okay this is the kashi vishveshwar temple right just a second everyone now when we talk about this kashi vishveshwar temple let me just tell you that uh, this particular right this particular temple is not alone okay it is not alone there are many other temples as well for example look at this one this is uh, the temple style of the hoysalas i am talking about these pillars my dear these pillars have a look on this have a look on this pillar and you will realize that what a level of intricate carvings in the right just on the pillar you will see that there are the covered right shades do you remember the do you remember that there were the uh, you know brackets constructed exclusively for the placing of the dts placing of the dts right so here every pillar is decorated richly decorated with the dts and not only that the minute stone work minute stone work stone art that is visible to you and if you just look at the ground work my dear look at the ground work right now i am not explaining to you about this uh, stellate design this is the stellate design okay following the pattern like that of a diamond having the multiple edges multiple edges okay but have a look on this i hope that you all will be eager to watch so i will be giving this particular pdf file to you on my telegram channel and there you can watch it that 
on right in the lowest ring of the stones there are hundreds of the small elephants constructed throughout sculpted throughout then here you will be seeing again the elephants plus the horse riders here you will be seeing the you know wheels or the chakras then here you will be seeing the people or you know the army men carrying the different type of different type of uh, you can say positions so you cannot imagine the level of exquisite carvings which have been actually done on each and every part of this temple okay and these temples my dear students they are actually they are actually related to the vesar style constructed by either the chalukyas or the hoysalas or the kakatiyas etc for example this particular temple yeah this particular temple this is a right a simple temple this is a simple looking temple called as the ramappa temple called as the ramappa temple uh, constructed by the kakatiya dynasty and look at the design of the tower doesn't it look like the you know effort to make a pyramid up to this point it looks like a dravidian tower and over and above it looks like a nagar style tower not only that if you look at the mandap this entrance is basically this entrance is basically having a portico then portico is followed by the mandap okay mandap is covered from all the sides except the entrance so this mandap is not having any tower not having any tower because the towers on the mandap that is the feature of nagar style but this is showing the similarity to that of the dravidian style however if you look at the height of the tower then again they will be following the nagar style so again you are i think you are able to understand the repeated combination of the two special features of the two special architectural designs uh, that is nagar and dravid now this particular temple <coughs> this temple is called as a joda kalash temple which temple joda kalash temple why am i calling it as the joda kalash because this is not that i am calling it this temple is famous as joda kalash it is located in karnataka again have a look on this temple the entrance is here okay the entrance is here and then there is a common mandap okay common mandap to both you can go to either sides and on both the sides you have less heighted temple with the pattern similar to the dravidian tower but a very less height is there very very less height is there all right everyone so now this is the beginning of the trikoot style this is the beginning of the trikoot style why am i saying like that because suppose th these two towers are here then you just enhance the entire area and construct a third tower here construct a third tower here this temple will become the trikoot model or trikoot design of temple isn't it now this is right the image of kashi vishveshwar temple this is the image of not sorry not kashi only no it is actually kashi vishveshwar i'm sorry kashi vishweshwar temple because uh, the name is actually little bit confusing right name is little bit confusing because it uh, uh, says that kashi vishweshwar but this is not located in kashi remember that this is located in karnataka region only right karnataka only so here you can just have a look on the intricate carving of this particular temple design as well and then you will realize then you will realize these type of additional structures is anybody able to watch this yes or no everyone if you are able to watch this can you identify the presence of the yaksh presence of the yaksh and then can you identify the presence of the miniature right miniature tower miniature tower in the nagar style nagar style these are the special mini towers mini towers constructed exactly following the nagar style even having the amalaka etc 
here also you can see the inverted embellishment or the amalaka designs amalaka designs so basically they made the nagar towers a matter of right a matter of decoration on the on the main tower of the temple right this is how they are combining the different features okay everyone now this temple is again following the similar pattern of construction can you uh, see this one this is the entrance the common mandap the common mandap and on the one side a small temple on the other side a larger temple okay now so which means that these are basically following the twin pattern temple style but very soon they will be they will be following the trikut style now when we proceed further then we have to understand that this temple architecture called vesar style is actually having the influence of both nagar as well as dravidian as i told you i just showed you many examples also but we have to understand exactly which type of impact is of the at nagar and which type of impact is from from the dravidian so here first of all when we say that plan of this entire temple plan of the entire temple or uh, the presence of the shrines panchayatan style all that is taken from the nagar style okay everyone all that is taken from the nagar style then there is the presence of the vestibule vestibule what is the meaning of vestibule everybody i had told you that if this is the garbhagri okay this is the garbhagri and this should be the gap and this is the mandap this is the mandap this is the garbhagri and this is the gap this gap is called as antaral what is it called as antaral antaral is also known as vestibule okay vestibule all right everyone antaral is called as vestibule so remember these points these are very very crucial you never know that in a statement based question in the prelims examination or in the mains examination mains is approaching and you never know that they may ask a question about the evolution of the temple architecture with the geographical features or evolution of the temple architecture and its consequences right such type of questions might be asked so you should be mentally prepared for that then uh, most of the temple pillars in karnataka region they bear the similarity to the sekhri and bhumija type of the pillars in the northern india okay sekhri and bhumija type of pillars in northern india how do they look like exactly how do they exactly look like guys basically the stepped diamond plan is there which looks like that there are multiple facades of the temple how do they look like right like that okay like that okay like so this is how the temples are actually designed in the vesar temple architecture okay everyone so these temples basically they are you know they are inspired by the nagar and they show that stepped diamond or the stellate plan however let me tell you that even nagar temple architecture that is not very prominently stellate nagar temple architecture it largely looks like a rectangular plan with slight edges have you ever observed okay this is the plan of the nagar okay this is the plan of the plan of the nagar sorry Okay, like that so here on the corners in the nagar style in some temples you will observe this type of uh, cornices this type of divergent right divergent features but in the vesar style this feature has become so much prominent so much prominent that you will observe it eventually in every temple every temple there will be you know there will be the repeated right there will be the repeated cornices which would be trying to imitate the old style of uh, construction of temple but they are here 
to make it more complex to make it more beautiful and visibly appealing right so miniature decorative towers as well as the ornamentation of the walls that is also a feature that is also a feature but it is actually the combination of dravidian as well as the nagar style so that is what i was talking that is what i am talking about this is look at this one these are the nagar motifs nagar motifs i had already told you in the previous page itself okay and what is the meaning of the bhumija this is the right this is the bhumija pillars bhumija type of pillars okay these are the bhumija type of pillars where the temple pillars are actually they are actually you know fused together with the building of the temple now now let us talk about specifically about the chalukyan architecture because the chalukyas they are considered to be the flag bearers or the pioneers of the vesar temple architecture they are the pioneers so what type of uh, architecture did they construct let me tell you that the earliest chalukya temples earliest chalukya temples that could be found in the places like a hole watapi and pattadakal ko a hole watapi and pattadakal if you see it a hole then at a hole you will find okay the lad khan temple the lad khan temple and durga temple durga temple at pattadakal you will find at pattadakal you will find the group of the group of uh, 70 temples 70 temples which are designated as unesco world heritage site unesco's world heritage site okay 70 plus temples are there at pattadakal all right everybody and at watapi or badami you will find the temples like the papanath okay papanath temple okay bhutanath temple bhutanath temple and not only these temples but also at watapi you also have the rock cut temples about which we have already studied already studied so we don't have to talk about the rock cut temples papanath bhutanath temples etc these are also there these are also there okay similarly if you see there are the temples called as the you know lokeshwar temples or trilokeshwar temples okay lokeshwar temples or trilokeshwar temples so loka mahadevi or triloka mahadevi basically you know these were the queens who got these temples constructed but overall let me tell you whichever names you are taking whichever names you are taking here in this class all these temples they have got a few things in common few things in common and those things actually laid the foundation of the vesar temple style okay now this is uh, the temple this is the temple at a hole this is particularly the lad khan right the lad khan temple okay in fact if you see the original temple behind it right now that will be having a flattish roof that will be having a flattish roof okay so you can understand very well that the earliest temples might be having a flat roof even in the chalukya kingdom remember those temples when we studied that in the gupta period even the guptas as well as the chalukyas guptas are located in the north okay but after one or two centuries chalukyas are located in the southern india guptas were constructing those temples in the fifth century approximately they are constructing the temples in the sixth seventh century however initially the temples in the north and the temples in the southern india they looked very similar no tower flat roof less heighted or less heighted base and you can say lack of any substantial plinth these all were the common features 
these all were the common features right so chalukyas they did not deviate much but the hoysalas hoysalas they actually brought the required revolution in this temple design why so for example the chenna keshav temple at vellur okay chenna keshav temple at vellur in uh, karnataka or the hoysaleshwar temple hoysaleshwar temple again in the helibidu karnataka or the soma keshav temple in karnataka only all these temples my dear they follow an intricate design like that have a look on the temple pillars you all might have seen these type of pillars in the youtube or in the i think social media portals anywhere just to make you astonish that how is that type of shine and how is that type of precise machining how is that type of uh, intricate stone work even possible even possible in such an early period in such an early period all right and guys you can just watch the motifs which are used here you can see that within a square embell square chamber there are the there are the you know octagonal decorative patterns not only that you can see the ring like stone okay ring like stones which are actually carved in this pillar which is made up of granite extremely difficult to work with without a grinding machine you cannot even expect that this type of work is even possible but they have made it possible then have a look on this particular temple right the typical the typical hoysaleshwar temple design can you realize or can you see the stellate design stellate design here everybody is it visible to all of you stellate design because i have already told you that the intricate statues are used to decorate the temple walls and not only that the stone work is looking like the ornament right ornamentation this entire work is looking like a jewelry right looking like a jewelry so this is probably the image of keshav right here look at this one okay then chenna keshav temple is also very famous for having the mohinis or having the mohinis and the naikas right mohini and naika dear students remember these are important terms for the prelims examination mohini naika these were these were the nymph okay nymphs or the demi gods or demi goddesses similar to the similar to yakshini similar to yakshini and shal bhanjika and shal bhanjika okay i hope that everybody remembers shal bhanjika how many of you can tell me in the comment box who was or what is exactly shal bhanjika where are we supposed to find the shal bhanjika tell me in the comment box everybody now apart from that you can see this temple from the another angle and you will realize the presence of this smaller temple architecture that looks like a miniature temple okay then when we talk about the kakatiya temple designs or kakatiya temple architecture then guys kakatiya's architecture that was prominently evolved during the 11th to 12th to 13th century okay and particularly this temple architecture this remained at the top during the 12th century and 13th century now here let me tell you one thing most of the kakatiya architecture that is influenced by the chalukyan design however however the kakatiyas were much more careful about the intricate works on the surface of the on the surface of the temple wall or on the pillars or even in the ground now this picture is probably perfectly showing the stellate design or the zigzag pattern or the diamond pattern of the temple construction have a look on 
have a look on this okay or you can simply match it with the right you can simply match it with the other features as well like here now this okay like that okay everyone so probably the chalukyas they initiated this entire pattern only to only to uh, you know make it further popular or only to inspire the upcoming dynasties because the reason was that in these areas let me tell you the unavailability of the unavailability of the sandstone that was a big problem big problem and those who don't know guys these temples were actually constructed by the shale and by the schist or the gneiss and granite they were not constructed by the sandstone they were not constructed by the basaltic stones they were primarily constructed by shale and schist which were softer stones also you can call uh, you can uh, you can recall another name called statite or the soap stone that was largely used in the construction of the what right kakatiya's temples okay everyone so we can say that the availability of the soft stones that resulted into this so much of intricacy of the carving so much of the detailing on the pillars so much of the decorations on the temple otherwise this would have been extremely daunting task for any artisan to construct such temples which we are seeing by the hoysalas or by the kakatiyas or by the chalukyas etc all right everyone now the kakatiyas were especially famous for using the trikoot model because the kakatiya temples are regarded as the standard prototype of the vesar temple architecture and here they also used the sandbox technology what is the meaning of the sandbox technology basically they right filled the they filled the base of the temple construction with the hot sands and the gravels to provide the additional subsistence as well as the additional height and the depth depth to the temple foundation not only that building materials which were used here so stones as well as bricks both were you know both were used for construction of the temples and guys they also used the floating bricks now that is very strange floating bricks means what you might have heard about the special type of rock special type of rocks called as a pumice called as pumice those right who those who might have heard about the pumix okay the pumix rock okay the pumix are basically the volcanic okay volcanic uh, stones or volcanic eruption stones these pumic rocks they were widely used in the construction of the kakatiya's temples due to their extremely lightweight nature due to their resilient strength and due to the easy workability with these stones okay so they make the kakatiya temples quite unique now this is what we call as the trikoot style i hope this picture makes complete sense to everybody that what is the stellate design and what is the trikoot design what is the sandbox foundation that looks like a you know apart from this you know extra foundation it looks a little bit more elevated and then we have the temple boundaries we have the smaller heighted uh, smaller heighted towers of the temple so overall you can say that perfect example of the vesar temple architecture that is nothing but nothing but the kakatiya temples constructed here all right everyone now so i hope that this entire session have given you some great insights related to the vesar temple architecture for the content related things you can join my telegram group by using this particular link or by scanning this qr code in case if anybody who is uh, you know known to you or you yourself are planning to start your preparation with us on so the guys today is 11th and today we have already 
started our morning batches so make it sure that you do not forget to uh, register and enroll with this particular batch today and in case if you have already done it then we will meet in the classes remember that these batches are available in the pure english in the pure hindi and in the bilingual mode as well so please make it sure that you register it before today uh, before the end of today why because uh, nobody knows that if prices may go up or may you know discounts may be finished so if you are just willing to take the advantage of this discounted price use my code asr live that will give you this 29999 rupees price so that's all in today's session guys thank you so much and uh, tell me in the comment box or tell me through the mails or through this my telegram channel that which all topics do you want because uh, the culture is going to be covered by i think uh, by one week or so so should i bring the medieval history you can tell me in the comment box because i am planning to bring this uh, satish chandra medieval history for all of you satish chandra plus new ncrt that mix will be there complete one stop solution for medieval history because nowadays upsc has started asking the questions from medieval history once again in fact ancient plus medieval they are giving you more questions than the modern history so you can give me your suggestions in the comment box once uh, once you are uh, done with the watching this lecture and then i will be coming up with my decision as per your comments as per your suggestions thank you so much for watching it guys take care bye bye jai hind